Mozzie, you're such a goofy puppy. You're such a goofy puppy. Mozzie, Mozzie. Mozzie, Mozzie. You're such a goofy puppy. You're such a goofy puppy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, you think you're a lap dog. You're too big for a lap puppy. Hi, it's Lost Dude. It's Diane. I thought I'd do a quick video. Well, hopefully quick. Um, first things first, my daughter received her chemotherapy, um, today is August 5th, her birthday, her 25th birthday. She received her chemotherapy on August 2nd, um, August 3rd was pretty rough. She had a lot of nausea, very tired, um, it was her first chemotherapy, so we're not sure if that's the norm. Yeah. I was with her. <sighs> Let's just say it's not easy to see a loved one going through that. And, um... She went back to her apartment yesterday. And this morning she woke up. She has a weird rash, which is not uncommon with chemotherapy. Um, and we're taking notes to talk to the doctor and making sure that she has no fever and no urgent need to see the doctor. We're, we're, we're doing all that, but um, yeah, it's still pretty hard. Um, she has her next two months worth of chemotherapy scheduled and just trying to find she doesn't want to eat, but she has to eat. What can she eat? What can... It's hard. It's very hard. But, um... We'll keep going forward. Her next chemotherapy is August 16th. And, um, again, I'll be there and supporting her as much as I can through this whole thing. Um, I also wanted to show this bracelet, it says Just Breathe, and violet is the color for Hodgkin's lymphoma, and then there's a charm underneath that says Daughter. Um, I got matching bracelets for my daughter and myself. Hers doesn't have the daughter charm. I said, you know, just those moments where you feel alone, you need to remember you're not alone, and um, to connect with her. I also bought a t-shirt. Uh, it says, I wear violet for my daughter. Hashtag Hodgkin's Lymphoma Awareness. So, yeah. It's still pretty hard, though. I will admit. Uh, can we talk to USPS people? Can we rant about the USPS people? I realize there are good carriers out there. I realize there are good people working in USPS. But when you get a bad one, it sucks. Um, Friday, I was sitting here in my room. If you go out my door, up seven steps, that's the front door. So, you know, kitty corner from the front door. Um, I was watching something on my Kindle, and I was, I was restarting something, and I was just, and I heard her vehicle go by, and her stop, and sometimes it's hard to tell if it's my house or the next house that she stops at, but it's probably, I don't know, 50, 60 feet from my front door to the drive to the street, so this one, and I know which mail carrier it was, because it wasn't Mary who was such a good mail carrier, or I believe her name was Lisa, or was it Linda? I think it was Linda. Um, she is such a fabulous one. She will, when she has a package, she'll put all your other mail on top and carry the package to the door, knock on the door, give it to you, so you don't have to walk to the mailbox. Really nice woman. 
This is not that one. This is the snotty brunette. That subbed for her just a couple times and magically she's on my route. So, uh, my husband had ordered something, I think through Amazon. It must have been through Amazon because I got a notification that it was here. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, I had to change mini dot. So I was outside within 10 minutes getting the mail. Did she knock? Did she ring the doorbell? No. And we had 10 people at home at the time, I think. I think it was 10 people in our house at the time. It was kind of rainy, so the kids weren't outside. Our puppy dogs were. And our dogs bark at everything. Didn't bark. Didn't bark. So I go out there, and on the front stoop, there's the big box, and there's another package for my husband. Perfect condition. So I walk to the mailbox because I know that she's too lazy to actually. It's just so stupid. She stops at the mailbox, puts stuff in the mailbox drives another 10 feet, stops her truck, turns it off, walks to the front door, walks back, has to restart her vehicle, go on. Okay, so if you just stopped your truck to begin with, and bring out everything forward, and then, because you know we're home. She had to walk around her daughter's car. She saw our van. We're home. We're usually home. 99 times out of 100, we're home. She's been doing it long enough, she should know that. And then she's been doing it for a few years now, and she should know that. She should. So I brought stuff in, and I didn't think much of it, and I look in the backyard. And I'm like, oh. And I told my almost 12-year-old, said, the dog's out in the garbage, it's all over the backyard, please go pick it up. So he goes back there. And my 10-year-old daughter goes to help him. And maybe one of the other little boys went out just to pick up the paper. And the son, whose garbage month it is, was helping me with supper. Otherwise, he would have gone out and done it, too. Because they swap back and forth who does garbage each month. Um, they come in, and what do they bring me? I see a package like this, torn to bits. They bring me the pattern, ripped to shreds. Now, before anyone says, well, they were your dogs, you should have been watching them. Excuse me, the postal lady had to stand there on my front doorstep literally put the box next to my door stand back up doorbell is right there knock on the door really she couldn't do it too damn lazy to do it So uh, what I had ordered was the new uh, Mira Pixies, Monk's Hood, and Poison Ivy. I have Poison Ivy because just the packaging was damaged. The pattern's perfectly fine. Like here in the end, you can tell it is a little bent. No holes. I root. <laughs> I've done a lot worse to my patterns. Let me tell you, perfectly usable. Monk's Hood, we tried to put it together because I thought, well, if we tape it, maybe I can photocop new. Totally shredded. So thank you, USPS. You suck. I just, y'all realize that when you put fragile or do not bend on the envelope or package, they, they take, they consider it a personal challenge. I have met those, those, those carriers. And before you say, oh, you should put a claim in with the USPS, why? It doesn't go anywhere. My daughter bought a college textbook. She paid for insurance. 
through USPS. She prayed for tracking through USPS because it's a used book. And so she said, well, I'm going to put it tracking. I'm going to put insurance on it in case something happens. We got an empty envelope. Okay, it had tracking on it. We know every post office that empty envelope, which wasn't empty to begin with, was at. She filled out every form, every documentation, proved she had insurance on her package. She had like $100 or $150 worth of insurance. She proved that she had tracking. She knew every place. The USPS said, oh, things happen. Like, she paid for insurance. Well, yeah. So it's a scam. It's a scam. Oh, I was, I was just livid. I was mad at my dogs, I will admit. But excuse me, they're puppies. They didn't bark. And they bark at flies. They didn't bark. The, the, this size package fits in my... I have a large mailbox. I mean, in June, I had Lady Mirabilia Alice, the bead pack, the thread pack for Lady Mirabilia, and I, the little cameo uh, booklet that all fit in my mailbox without even being bent. All she had to do was knock on the door. You're standing back up, knock. You don't have to stand there and wait for us forever. Because you know we're mm -hmm. home. That was Friday. Saturday, we didn't get our mail to 6 p.m. On a Saturday. Are you kidding me? Oh, it used to be every day about 2.30. Except Mondays. Mondays are a little longer. Oh, so USPS sucks. Not that UPS is any better. That's a story for another day. Anyway. What was I going to show so, I'll show haul, why not, and then I can show stitching. For my birthday, my friend said, hey, I, I sent you a birthday gift, and so, what did she send me? The Queen Mermaid. Queen Mermaid! Of the four that were released, I owned two of them already, and then I said this is only the one. Fairy Moon just doesn't grab me. That one. If you like it, go for it. It's not a bad pattern. But she got me this uh, Queen Mermaid. She's gorgeous. Gorgeous. And I got this, and it was... It was after a very long day. I got this on the 23rd of July. I remember that because my husband flew out for work at like 4.30 in the morning. Um, I had a follow up with my daughter's oncologist so I was there and then I did some grocery shopping and then I went to Home Depot the Home Depot off of County Road 6 in Plymouth uh, I don't like that one you have to go f hunt and find people hunt and find carts you have to oh. and it was like dirty you know disorganized dirty much prefer the one in Monticello um Anyway, which I went to yesterday, and so I got this one, and then I was thinking, you know, I have this piece of fabric, uh, Moonlit Waters, opalescent, 32 count, on linen, but, oh, you can't get the streaks, they're streaks. From here to here. This is from Under the Sea Fabrics. Isn't that pretty? And I'm thinking she would look really pretty on this. When I was at the retreat, someone held this fabric up. It was a half at the time, and I just I immediately fell in love with it. And I said, Are you gonna take that whole piece of fabric? She said, No, no, I'm just taking a fat quarter. And I said, Well, can I have the other? piece, you know, you pick. You pick whichever side you want and I'll take the other side. And this is, it, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very different than the one that's pictured. 
this the moonlit waters very different than the one that's pictured on fabric viewer so that um fabric of the month by relicious i changed my thing to 36 count because i'm liking 36 count i still get a fat eight but this is mermaid's grotto and it is a bright teal that's not coming across you can see the modeling that's better again I don't have the greatest lighting but it is what it is mermaid's grotto fiberlicious I opened it and my husband's like oh is that your fabric of the month I said yeah oh so you have enough fabric to finish all your projects already <sighs> silly husband no no and then I showed Lisa and Ivy and I must say I bought I usually buy my Mira patterns, unless I'm going to LNS. I usually buy my Mira patterns through Just Add Needles on Facebook. She also has a a web page. I'm not sure how active the web page is, but I think you can contact her through the web page if you're not on Facebook. And I will put her information below. Her name is Marie. She contacted me. She had heard about the dog fiasco. She's sending me another pattern and she didn't have to do that she it was not her fault at all and she will take a you know a running pattern like this and she will wrap it in tissue paper and oh it's her customer service outstanding she has some out of print mirrors on the facebook page which i'll link below click on photos and albums and i think it says out of print she also has other she carries other uh, pattern lines. She says, oh, oh, you know, oh, oh, P.S. Look in there, out of print patterns. Um, <coughs> not, oops. <coughs> Sorry. Look in there, and she sells them like a mini kit, so you get beads and stuff with them. She said that way she knows that the person's a stitcher rather than going to go turn around and sell it on eBay. I bought dam damask roses through her. I made some of the seasons before they went out of print and the Rose of Sharon, Rose Arbor, whichever one went out of print. I ordered those through Marie. Fabulous, fabulous customer service. I encourage you to go see, check her out. Sweet woman. Anyway, I also got part seven, Farmhouse Christmas, cock a doodle doo haven't started it yet. I'm stitching all mine on the 32 count natural. Oh, and I will put a picture in of my monk's hood pattern. But I do have a finish. Part six. Pine, what is this? Pine tree farm. I finished that on the 31st. Took me all month. Um, I'll admit it's hard for me to stitch. Hard for me to focus. Although, when we were sitting there uh, for my daughter's chemo, the scheduler, the person who comes in so they can schedule a bunch of appointments and then you don't have to worry about it type of thing, scheduling every single one, she came in and she said, Oh, what are you stitching? And I showed her. She says, oh, have you ever been to Stitchville? I said, oh yeah, I've been a customer of theirs for 20 years. She said, yeah, so have I. So then we talked a little bit of cross-stitching for a few minutes. It was kind of nice in a... It's one of those situations you don't want anybody to be in, but when you're in it, it was kind of nice to find another um, cross-stitcher. This is the one I was stitching from Cottage Garden Samplings. I am not using all of the hand dyes. I can't remember how many there are. <clears throat> I am using two. I'm using for the pink, the light pink. You can tell, like the feather up here, the tips are outlined in uh, baby pink by Carrie's Creation Cottons. 
and then they're filled in and filled in down here. I did use the Weeks azaleas, the one that is called for in that, that part of the pattern because that's where you can see the variegation. I couldn't see the variegation in any of the other colors. So I said, well, then I'll just do DMC in all those other colors. And that's what I'm doing, all DMC except for the pinks. This is 36 count natural. So I'm doing one strand over two threads. That's turning out cute. So I have some spots up here left, right in here, and then the tail feathers, and then um, this part down. So it's getting there. It's one of those pieces I can do I don't really have to study the pattern or I don't have to think too hard about it. I need those kind of patterns right now. That's what I'm stitching the most on. A uh, new start. New start. Baskets. Rosewood Manor. I am using the Valdani. I normally stitch in hand, um, but I am putting this one on Q-snaps because the Valdani and these little balls here, it's three strands. And this is 28 count Wren by Picture This Plus. Beautiful, beautiful piece of fabric. Um, I'm having a hard time getting the tension even with three strands. And so I thought, okay, I wonder because I was stitching in hand and, and I was having a hard time in hand getting the tension. So I thought if I put it in a Q-snap, maybe that'll be easier to keep the tension. If not, I'm going to try it. Um, and if I still don't like it, I am going to restart this. I will get another piece of ren, but I'll get 36 count. And then I'll use one strand instead of three. So this is how the fiber I'm trying to get it so you can see yeah it's you know it's obviously thicker than two strands but um yeah i'm trying to, i can't get that tension right so i'm hoping that on a q snap it'll help me but i love the colors in that they're just they're just beautiful beautiful colors so I, uh, I put all of them in these little baggies. They're roughly three inches by four inches. And I, I either bought them at Joann's or ordered them. And then I have the label, the number that's on this little piece of paper that always falls out. <laughs> um, and then I put the symbol. If you do this, or you do this like with your, your DMC bags, snack bags. Make sure your labels are permanent, not removable, because they will fall off on you. They will. So there's that one. And then this one I restarted. Lady of Mystery. I originally was going to stitch this on Fiberlicious Rolling in the Deep, the one that goes kind of a pink down to a purple. Beautiful piece of fabric. But the fibers that are called for, this looks a little more red than the actual colors. They just blended too much. So I decided to restart it because I only had one, maybe two lengths of floss in there. It wasn't hard to frog. And so this is 32 count frozen fractals hand dyed by Stephanie. And this is where I'm at. And the, the colors are really popping on this fabric. 
I originally bought the fabric to stitch Sunrise Lugana Mermaid and Moonlit Lugana Mermaid. Um, but then I ran into this issue and I thought, well, what fabric do I have? Because I want to start her. She is on my year of whips. And I'm just, I'm in the mood to stitch on her. And, um, so I pulled it. I had originally intended to go to Galleria, but I'm not going to now, um, for obvious reasons. And I know that Stephanie's supposed to be there, so I'm going to, you know, give my friend some money and say, hey, if she has a piece of that fabric, please pick it up for me. And then I showed this piece, Glenn in Place, A Bloom of Hope, GP156. This is originally designed for breast cancer, and I am going to stitch it in the breast cancer colors um, which are these are the called for DMCs and it called for water lilies. I changed the water lilies to Swa Cristal. Swa Cristal Silk is also made by Karen Collection. Um, they're cheaper. I'm, I'm going to admit it. They're cheaper. They're mostly solid. So I am going to stitch it that in those colors, but I also converted it. Again, violet is the ribbon color for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I converted it to purples. To violet. So the DMC um, and the this will stay the same. The ribbon is the DMC. The flower is silk. I thought it was the other way around when I first looked at the pattern. And these are the silks that I'm using. And here's where I'm at. This is 28 count water lily joblin. I finished all the light color and then I have the medium color on here and there's just a little bit more of the medium color kind of in this area and then it goes into the border so it's coming together nicely um, it's a nice stitch this is a nice piece of fabric too this Jobelin the color is beautiful kind of a light green gray and the, it just feels so nice and that's what I've been working on so I thought I'd do a, a quick video here I'm going to throw it out there. If you would like to send an encouragement card or a cancer, well, an encouragement card or a birthday card for my daughter, contact me at mon.stitches at gmail.com. Um, if I realize you're a stitcher, which I've been around Floss Tube enough and uh, Facebook enough to know who is a stitcher and all that. Um, I'll send you an address you can send a card to, and my daughter will receive all the cards. I did that for our church, and they got a whole bunch of cards together and gave them to her, and it was so encouraging for her. It's still hard, but it was so encouraging. If you would be interested in doing that, I'm going to put my, my address below, or I, my email address below, and then I'll contact you from there. Um, but I thank you so much for all your comments and your encouragement, virtual hugs. This is a really good community. Um, her next chemotherapy is August 16th. And to go through it all again. But I will keep you guys apprised on how she's doing. She's close to her, she's like three weeks from her college degree. So she's getting close. She's getting so close. She's done so well. We are so proud of her. So amazingly proud of her. But, um, I think that's all I wanted to, to share with you. I will put pictures in of the home improvement project. I did a video with a big yellow spot behind me. There's no more yellow, ugly wall. A little bit of trim and we're done. Um, I'll put pictures in of my pattern. And I might throw a little mozzie video in here. One of the culprits. Yeah. But I love all of you. 
Um, you're fabulous. And I will talk to you all soon. If you want to contact me on, on Instagram, it's ma.stitches. Uh, email will be below. Instagram will be below. Many of you know my name on, on Facebook. So, love to y'all.